from our plays. Are we going? Is this it? This is it. Right, hello. Welcome back to another podcast. This one looks a bit different, hopefully a little bit more professional in my living room. It's the first one we've done in person. No, is just, it? Is it not the first one we've done in person? No, I think we did one sitting on your, your bench. Ooh. No, well, that, maybe that was an intro. That was just an intro. So yeah, 2023, upgrading the game. Um, what are we going to do? We're going to try and put out more random little podcasts and just get together like once or twice or as many times a week as possible. Yeah, maybe that's a good place to start. Maybe we should tell him a little update on front and yeah. like what we've been doing, what's going on with front and why we're doing what we're doing. So we've actually loved doing the podcast. We we really, really love doing the podcast. Don't hang the table. We really love doing the podcast, but what's been hard is finding the balance between working on front, finding time to do the podcasts, and doing our own jobs, earning money to pay our rent and mortgage and all that kind of stuff. But what I think, what I think, if we're honest to ourselves. We've in our head, we've like, right, we need to get a guest, we need to talk to them, we need to make it look as good as we can, we need to put it out, we need to advertise it. But do you know what, actually, as well, is just thinking on that getting a guest is it's a bit stressful. Like, yeah. booking people actually hasn't been too difficult, but it's you then you, you want to be prepared, so you do a lot of research. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you're speaking to, you do a research on who they are, yeah. but it's quite, uh, and again, it doesn't matter who I'm talking to. I, I get it. I find it quite nerve wracking doing it because oh, yeah. I'm so like in awe of anybody who wants to talk to us and yeah. who takes great photos. So yeah, I, I love speaking to the guests. I'm never like I am nervous talking to them, but as soon like after a couple of minutes, it's always it's it's yeah enjoyable experience talking to them. But I don't want them to think that we're dicks. My fa yeah my yeah. favorite yeah. bit. Doesn't want to talk to us. Again. Yeah, my favorite part of a of the recording of the podcast is usually an hour in when everyone's loosened up but that's usually when you finish up so yeah but we just got to do more we want to do more where it's just us two talking and we're yeah. just saying like talking about whatever yeah we're just gonna go in front of the camera more well i mean i don't know if you've noticed over on our instagram that we've been putting various questions out on our instagram stories asking if you want to see more of our faces and so many people have responded saying, yes, we want to know what's going on behind the scenes. We want to see your two faces more. What's going on behind the scenes? You had a haircut. I had a haircut. This is why I put the front beanie on. I've just got back from a week in France and I cut my own hair. Sorry, Alex. I know you're listening to this. He's my hairdresser, also a wicked photographer. But my fringe was too long. I looked like this 16-year-old emo kid, so I had to cut my own hair. And I uh, just need a haircut. So you just need a haircut, yeah. You haven't got your front beanie on, have you? Um, so you, you've been to France. What have you been doing? Did you know, she was telling them what's going on with front. What's going on with front? What's going on? Same as usual. We, we, we've built loads of it. There's so I, I've actually put together a list of everything that needs doing, but it's, it's some stuff that we're stuck on. So, like, to be perfect, you know, open and honest, we're, we're currently speaking to a developer who's going to help us with some, um, the last few bits to, to do the testing. Um, I think once it's launched, I want to do a whole thing about why it's taken so yeah. bloody long to get to this point. Um, but it, until that point, like, let's not do that. But we just sum it up. Front was an, an idea that we just thought Luke would be like Luke being a designer. We've said all this before, haven't yeah, we? We thought it would be quick. But new listeners, we, we, we thought Front would be this idea. Yeah. Luke would be able to build it in a couple of months. Quickly realised that it was way bigger than that. Um so we're about 95% of the way there, but we just can't do the last 5% without outside help. So we're now getting that help and hopefully it will be finished soon and we can launch it at its basic level mm. and then it will continue to develop from there. And just, so. just waiting for a quote now from us. So yeah. as long as it doesn't come back and it's like 10 grand, then, yeah. then hopefully. Yeah, we're, right. we're funding this ourselves, remember. We haven't got like a, you know, sugar daddy. Yeah, for an only fan. Yeah, yeah, only fan. Then start fans. that. We should start that. Yeah. Maybe we should charge for these podcast episodes. Yeah, who would pay for that? So not yeah, for like you'd pay for this. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I just got back from a week in France with my fiance and her family. We went snowboarding and skiing. It was actually a trip that I planned to go on. Well, the the, the family planned it three years ago. Um, but due to COVID and lockdown, it just kept getting delayed and delayed. And we finally just got back yesterday. Well, we finally went this year. Um, and I got back yesterday. Um, 
but I took with me the Rico. Probably get it, shouldn't I? So I, yeah, I took with me the Rico GR2, which are we going to talk about France or are we going to talk about the Rico GR2 and our love hate relationship with it? Well, I've sold mine. So. Oh, you've got, oh, it's gone. Yeah, it has gone. So we, we've had this love hate relationship with the Rico GR2. I, I can't really say it's for any other camera. I absolutely loved it for, for the first two or maybe two, three years that I had the camera. And then as soon as I got other cameras and other lenses, I just didn't use it anymore. Was it the same for you? I love the concept of the camera, uh, what it is, the size of the sensor and the size, you know, compared to the size of the camera. It's great. I'm not a big lover of 28 mil, but that's, you know, beside the... It's another conversation. Whatever. But it was just, it never like felt right for me to use. And every time I took it out, I was like, just not enjoying using it. And then I, I bought it, but then yeah. I saw one going cheap. I thought, yeah, just just do it. It was a bit bashed around and whatever, and I just never really got on with it. And I kept going back to it, going, well, uh, it's a good little backup camera, but I've never used it as a backup camera, so what's the point in keeping it? So I stuck it on eBay, got more than I paid for it. So like, fine. They, they've rocketed in price secondhand, um, similar to a lot of cameras. So, uh, so it's gone, and I don't feel too sad about it. When I was listing it, I was writing like, wrote quite a little you know nice little thing about what the camera is and i was like i, I want to keep it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it really made that's me think that's twice. how i feel like i there's nothing wrong with it it takes amazing photos it's easy to use oh it's incredible so, so quick um but i just don't enjoy using it as much as i once did um and i know it's such a rubbish thing to say that like to me the image is always quite flat and compared to the images that i get out of my fuji and maybe that's more on me yeah. than the camera because obviously people like Sean Tucker and Sam Lintaro get incredible images from this. Yeah. But for me, I just, I don't. Um, but I, yeah, I get that I could do the same shot on the Fuji and there's something about it. Yeah. I'm like, even if you just enjoy using the camera. Well, this is it. I don't enjoy clicking. I, I enjoy pressing the shutter on my Fuji. Yeah. I don't on that. So it's like, it, it doesn't inspire me to pick it up and take it out. So it's gone gone and I'm, I'm happy about it well that's it so i so i went to the french alps and i thought i would take this with me as like a last well it was kind of like a make or break do i keep the camera or will i not keep the camera now to be fair i haven't actually uploaded the photos and looked through them yet because really? i got back 12 hours ago um and i had no hot water and two speeding tickets <laughs> so uh, it's yeah, two speeding tickets yeah um, so yeah, that's that was a that was a fun return. So yeah, so I haven't looked through the photos yet, but still, like going going back to what Luke just said, then when I was in France and I was walking around taking photos with this, I, I used it very casually because at the end of the day, I was there with my missus and the family, so I didn't really go there to do like street photography or anything like that. It was just a it was just a pocket camera that I knew was reliable that I could walk around with. Um, but even so, even when I had the camera out in my hands and I was using it, I'm, I mean, I probably text you a couple of times while I was there saying, I wish I would have bought X, Y, and Z camera with me or X, Y, and Z lens with me. I even said to you at one point, like, oh, I wish I was here with a medium format camera. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, why am I saying that? I've got a great camera in my hands right now. Yeah. Why am I already thinking about using someone else? And maybe that's just enough for me not to, to have it anymore. Now, if I was in the fortunate position to not need the money so much then i would keep it but now now i'm working doing photography and still in very much enjoy doing it casual mm. it's it's to me it's kind of like 400 four five hundred pounds that oh well yeah i could have that i could have towards more equipment yeah, yeah. i've asked uh, the, uh, up to this point i've been like it's not so much money that i'm like well that would make a huge difference to my life if i had no that but it's just been it's just gone to the point where it's been i put it in my camera bag it's going to be a backup camera yeah i've been out on i don't know half a dozen jobs since i bought this particular camera bag that i'm talking about and it hasn't been taken there on that bag so i'm like whatever what's the point yeah um and would i pick it up to use as a backup camera why do i need a backup camera yeah. i just bought this thing that we're filming this yeah. on yeah. Like and it's not going. It's not going to break. Well, it could, it could break, but I don't think I'd whip that out and be like, oh, "I'll finish the job using this." But you know, the first thing I did after I sold it is I started googling the GR3X with the 40 oh, yeah. mil lens, and I was like, oh. Oh, "To be fair, I have actually used the GR 
3X. Right. Only for five minutes. A friend of mine had one when I went skateboarding not that long ago. Yeah. And just that extra little bit of crop made a huge difference. Yeah. Oh, it's my favourite lens, that yeah. 40 mil. Yeah, that 40 mil was nice. But I, I like 28 mil, but it's weird that you say you, you're not... 28 mil isn't one of your favourite, considering you've just bought... Right, so that's what I was going to say. I've just bought a 16 mil, which yeah. is a 24 equivalent, equivalent. for my X-Pro 2. And the second I, I started using it, I was like, ah, oh, this is great. 28 mil, I think it's because it's the same um focal length that you have on your phone so you've I've, I've just like this is like almost what it looks like to look through a thing and i've never found when i've been doing street photography 28 mil to be like it's not like wide and weird enough to be like interesting but it's just not cropped in enough to be like i love it when i nail like a 50 mil street shot or whatever it's just something not that never sat right about it with me so obviously, I bought my first ever 120 camera, and it has a fixed 28 mil lens on, like equivalent lens, because I thought, you know what, I'm going to make it a task for myself. Yeah. And I have, and it actually has really been a task. It's yeah. not. It's it's not. Now you, you've already said you might not keep that. I might not for, keep it, but for a long time. But the results that I've seen. Yeah. Well, I can. I, I really <laughs> look. Yeah. We'll but some examples. Then. It's just been like. I hate, I hesitate to say this, but it's not been in, I don't enjoy using that camera yet. Yeah. So what I thought was, get an even wider lens to do street photography with and and get used to going wider. And as soon as I put that 24mm equivalent lens on the camera, took one photo of like one of my kids and was like, ah, oh, I, I love it actually. And I immediately wanted to go out and get some, do some really close up street stuff and quickly realize you only got eight photos yeah yeah oh no 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 but this is the yeah that's the 120 cam so, so i'm talking about the fuji oh, okay like yes the 120 is the fuji gsw so you can only take eight photos on one on a roll of 120 so and i like happy, that tr trigger happy luke here but... so i'm going the other way yeah i've got <laughs> like slide film and only take eight photos and uh 28 mil so it's been yeah it's a whole different process to what i'm used to doing but we're gonna go out i think like next week or something yeah. and go and do some street stuff i'm literally i'm gonna go out with that lens maybe a little pancake 40 mil lens in my pocket and that's it and then just just use that and it, and it's been like so going that much wider i'm like brilliant i love it so i thought wide angle is not for me yeah. anything about anything beyond 35 no good and i've got like a 20 mil uh adapter for my lomo lca yep. and every time i've used that i'm just like Meh. so i think that like it's a sweet spot 28 24 mil yep. equivalent Realise I keep looking at you and not looking at that, which is probably not very professional. But not prettier than that. Actually, I don't know. That's pretty. That's a nice camera. What, what, what camera is that that you're filming on? Or does it is that interesting? It's an X. I think we should do a video on it. Well, it's, it's a bloody nice camera. Yeah, it's an XH2S. But the problem is, we do a video about me using that camera, but we wouldn't should be using that to film with. But I've been doing loads of video work as my job recently, doing a lot more of that. So I, like, I need to upgrade my camera and get a gimbal and all that shit. So I've been using that. But it's a really nice camera and it's brilliant for stills as well. It's got a stacked sensor and it's just yeah. it's crazy. I can put up a couple of example shots, you know, whatever. If I get around to that. This video, these are not supposed to be for putting out loads of shit. I, like, I want to publish this like 10 minutes after we finish recording. So. Yeah, okay. How long have we been recording for? Fifteen minutes. Okay. Well, let's I'll wrap it up in five minutes. And... Well, I was going to say, what, well, let, let's let's end it with what what have we been up to personally in the last? I want to I want to say what have I been doing personally? Watching Granny Day's three hour long fucking <laughs> uh, trek across America video. Like I'm like, are you all right, Jason? <laughs> like, yeah. I, I watched his podcast yesterday. We started the podcast him and Caleb, and they he said he filmed something like two hundred hours of footage or. Something mad. So I they, really respect yeah. that he puts it. He puts the time and effort into putting out one, one video. Because you know he could put out 10, 20 minute videos, couldn't he? He could have split that. He could have split it and I took it as well. All this shit. So it's crazy what he's done. And it took. I went back and watched, rewatched bits of it. But like, what that made me do is go. 
fucking hell if he can do a three hour video i can finish the videos that we've been we're sitting on so many videos that we've recorded and just haven't put them together and haven't recorded like the voiceovers and stuff like that so we're going to do we're going to be that. pushing that this year we're going to be pushing more content more videos even in, in short form like this and more videos coming out that we're going to take a little step back in terms of not quality but it not that's the wrong word to use but we're going to take a step because we keep saying oh we're going to put some time aside and go out and record this video take these photos and then get it developed and really it takes too long because we've both got to earn money to live at the moment we've both got to find time to work on front and then we've both got a time fine to, to like edit these videos put them together speak to our guests so really we just need to take a little step back and go right let's just let's just kind of document what we're doing that's what you guys seem to enjoy more than anything is just seeing our kind of journey. You got just find the motivation to do it. Yeah. It's been like, we were so on it when we started doing yeah. it. And then last year, I think because things have been so backwards and forwards with, behind the scenes with trying to build this bloody website, yeah. um, it's just been a bit of a pain in the ass. So now it's Which like, is still our core focus, by the way. We're like, launching front is still our number one priority, but there's things that are outside of our control that we're, we're trying to get in line at the moment. But, it is coming. We'll, we'll, we'll just ring it. Is it? There's something just buzzing. No. It was. Um, but yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there with Fred. We will launch and we'll keep you posted. If you haven't already, please register to the mailing list. I, I mean, we've we've had hundreds and hundreds of people, or thousands now maybe, almost, almost a thousand people register to the mailing list, which is insane. Um, so yeah, if you do register to the mailing list, there'll be a link down below, but register to the mailing list. We don't send any junk mail or any spam or anything like that. Or anything. Or anything. We haven't sent anything yet, but we're waiting for the launch to be announced or to get to that point. And whoever has registered will get early access and a one-off exclusive offer. Probably. Probably. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's, that's where we're at with Front at the moment. We'll, we'll, we'll keep you updated as an as and when things develop um but yeah stay tuned for more content that's going to be coming out more podcast episodes yeah more just like easy quick things like this i ain't even given it a title it's just episode 51 i think 2023 episode one whatever you got any ideas for us or anything you want to hear us talk about whether it be news within the photography world or whether it be whatever film stocks cameras lenses anything music um you know, we both work on our own personal projects. Luke makes a lot of music videos. Maybe we can talk about that. Um, we've we've said this before, and then we just haven't done it because we're trying to we're just trying to juggle too many things. So we're motivated. We're more we're motivated more than ever now, aren't we? To to get things going with front, get our regular content, and um, yeah, yeah. Stay tuned with all you guys. Sunday Love, that's definitely one of our most popular features at the moment over on our Instagram. We actually, we absolutely love looking through the photos um, that you've hashtagged, using our hashtag front photography. Um, so yeah, we'll keep doing that and yeah, stay tuned. Is that all right? Yeah, it's great. Drum roll, please.